Hi, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cisco Virtual Kitchen Network, SVK, the network that kept us all alive during COVID. All the restaurateurs wanted to know something about something. We just stuck around. Jay, Jay was the man who really made us really know what was going on. He kept us in tune. He's a gentleman. He's a great, uh, he's a great networker, and uh, we are extremely. I am extremely happy to pop into him here at the. Uh, what do we got? All right, we got me on the big screen. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? That's fantastic. And we got a lease here from uh, somewhere in Edmonton. She's got a, a round. What do you got? What do you got? Round. What do you got on you? We've got inside round. The music is very loud in the background there. I don't know if you. It's okay. We're at a bar right now, shooting oh. shots and having a good time. So. I wish I was there with you. Okay, so we have an inside round happening today. I figured because it was broadcast live on the big screens we needed to go big today so i decided to get this giant hunk of meat to work with today so yeah we're going to be breaking this down we're going to be tying some roasts elsie yeah what part of the cow is the inside round for our viewers that don't really know what an inside round is okay so it is it is from the inside of the back hip so the inside part of the back leg of the cow basically so yeah. Now we know we know that beef has gone up in price like crazy over the past two or three years. Is that an expensive cut? Just a regular cut? What is that? It's a pretty regular cut. So it's kind of like a semi hard working muscle. So it's kind of not really tender enough to turn it into a steak without going to be doing something to it, whether you're going to be pre tenderizing it or marinating it. But it is the perfect quintessential roasting joint. So if you are roasting, if you are braising, this is the perfect one. So if you are creating a English Sunday lunch, this is the perfect thing for doing it with basically. So yeah, it's kind of like slow, braised kind of like it's perfect because it kind of keeps it tender. This is an incredibly lean muscle. Uh, so not a lot of fat in there, not a lot of fat cover, not a lot of kind of marbling in there, regardless of the grade that you're going for, because it is just a lean muscle. Okay, so, so now, what, do you, what do you do with that thing? You cut it up? Like, are you going to show us now what you're doing with it? I totally am. So the butcher magic is turning something big and unruly into something that looks so beautiful you want to eat it before it's even been cooked. So I'm going to start doing that now. So we're going to start trimming this up. So we're going to take a little bit of fat off the outside here. So have you seen the movie The Great Outdoors? Have I seen the movie The Great Outdoors? Yeah. No, I don't think I have. Is it a good movie? Okay, so in that, there is a, a famous scene where John Candy has to eat the famous 96. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so this nice. is basically one half of that steak. It's the top part, it's that inside, that this, the whole of that back leg cut into a slice, that is the old 96er. So this is half of it. So we're going to take some of this rough stuff off the end here, because we're going to turn this into a beautiful roasting joint. So while you, cut that, while, while you cut that, tell us where did you learn how to do all this wonderful stuff with beef? Where, where, where did you learn all this uh, culinary uh, expertise? The butcher trade. Okay, so my family are dairy and sheep farmers in the UK, and uh, a butcher married into our family, believe it or not. And I was lucky enough to kind of, I say lucky enough, but they were just a bit short-staffed and they needed someone to go in and help them out. And it was me that went in to help them out. And then I ended up absolutely loving it. And then I've been a butcher now for, I don't even know how many, it's like 28 years I feel like it's been now. Cause I actually started work as a butcher when I was 14 years old. So oh, a very, 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 very long time. That's Pardon? very impressive, very impressive. Thank you very much. And actually, I'm actually a member of the Canadian butcher team. So I feel like there's some of my fellow teammates are actually at the show that you're at. I think yesterday they were doing some butcher demos as well. So you've got a live one here from Edmonton and then you've got some actual team members at the show as well. Very good. So yeah, Let's so go. we've got this amazing, this is the butcher block beef. Uh, so Cisco's own brand of beef uh excellent to work with like so good reliable sizing small boxes so that you don't have too much money sat on your shelf at any one time uh just an excellent program and it's a really really nice it's nice beef to cook so kind of nice consistent sizing uh, the top part of every grade gets selected for our butcher block yeah. so yeah really really good for restaurants very good if you're trying to 
portion size is the same, trying to keep that consistency in plate pricing. Uh, the butcher block beef is excellent for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this one giant piece because if we tried to cook this whole thing, it would be a bit too unmanageable. So we're actually going to cut it into kind of three sections, basically. And the grains run this way, okay, on this beef. So we're going to slice it this way so that when I roll them this way, the you are going to slice them nicely this way and it's going to give you that perfect against the grain kind of cut, which is really, really important. So we're actually going to break into this right now. So you can kind of see how lean this muscle is. Giant and lean. That's pretty and lean, huh? Yeah, that's lean. It is very, very lean. So yeah, this, I'm gonna move that out of the way. Okay, so we're gonna roll this nice piece here. So I don't think Sunday lunch is as kind of, as prevalent maybe in Canada as it is in the UK where I am from. Uh, but you believe it or not, there was actually a ballad written in 1731, which was called the roast beef of old England, because they loved their roast beef so much yeah. that they wrote a song about it. Oh, I didn't know that. There you go. So this actual, so this is the inside round, what we call it here. It can also be referred to as top round. But if you were in England, this would be referred to as top side. Top so, side. Top side, yeah. So top side is this side, and then underneath it would be silver side and salmon piece of silver side. So salmon piece of silver side is eye of round and silver side is outside beef. So, so different I'll, names. Um, I to... I'll, Elise. Yeah? What's your favorite British rock and roll band? Oh, that's a tough one. You know, you're, um, you feel you know like a little to... strong Brit and, and you look like a rock and roller deep down inside. What's I'm the band? I'm gonna say the Rolling band? Stones. There you go, oh, that's good. a good, she's a stoner. We got a stoner over here. Yeah, I went to see them at, in Twickenham in the UK, and it was one of the best shows I've ever been to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to use the duct tape of the butcher world, which is butcher string. So I have this really nice red butcher string that we're, we used as part of our the competition when we competed at the World Butcher Challenge last year. Um, so it's nice red to match our nice red aprons. So butcher string is used to give uniformity and structure back to meat that doesn't have any bones in it. So it cooks nice and evenly. And obviously another thing is it looks really good as well. So we're gonna do some nice butcher knots here. So we're creating a slip knot over the top of our meat and then we're gonna do some nice. And why do you, why do, you do that? Why do you do that? So you know what, like most meat, when you've taken the bones out, it loses its structure. So it kind of, it can be bigger at one end and a bit like looser at the other end. If you try and cook that, it won't be very even and you'll get an inconsistent cook all the way through. If you use butcher string, it tightens everything back together and just gives a nice uniform shape to whatever you are cooking so that it cooks evenly. You know, years ago, we used to tell people that you could work out how to cook something by time. You look at the size of it and you use the time. Well, that doesn't work very well because not everything is the same size. So now we recommend- So, this holds, so there's two things, it holds it, together, it holds it together and it makes it cook equally, uh, yeah. evenly. Like but it also, it makes it look pretty sexy as well. Like a nicely tied piece of meat, I think is one of the nicest things. Well, so we're gonna I make this look nice and sexy here. So we're gonna tie this roast. I could try and slow this knot down for you and teach you, but I don't think I'd be able to teach you unless I was stood next to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you can kind of see that it's coming together. We've got the strings all the way along the top. Really important that your knots are all in a nice row and your strings are all nice and even. You know what? I don't know if it's a hard thing for you to do, but you got to show us how to tie that knot. Is there any way you yeah, can show sure. our viewers? I can viewers? show you. Yeah, show us because you know what? I see butchers do it all the time, and I got no clue what they're doing. There okay. we go. There's a close-up. There's a close-up. It's got a okay. slow-mo on the knot tying okay. process. Underneath. Okay. And then it comes back under here. Okay. And then yeah. you go underneath one side. Right. Up and over underneath to the, the top. Side. Yeah. Underneath. Come, come around the other way. Back through. And then through that. And then that's your slip knot. And then you lift it up and bring it back down to bring it into position. And then you need to do a knot over the top. So you do a double twist. It goes over the top of the knot. And then you just drop that over the top of the knot to hold it in place. 
and then just secure it at the end, like so. Well, very good. So you I'll know, show you. I'll show you this when we've finished. I'm just gonna tidy this up. So just square off the ends to make it look nice and pretty there. So there we go. So you can kind of see all the way down the side those nice strings, nice and even all the way across. Okay. So that's one. There we go. I'm making a mess all over my kitchen here. Let me just put this over here. So what else is going on at the show today? What are you guys doing there? You know what? The show's great. We got a lot of people at the Cisco booth. Um, they have all the people from Cisco here, really turning everybody on with new foods and new ingredients. And uh, you know, there's a great company here at Cisco doing a great job for the food service and hospitality business. And we got to congratulate them all. So, uh, the show's busy. They're doing a great job. And I just came around and saw Jay and said, "I got, I got nothing to do." So I decided to. Uh, Hold this interview so uh so he's dragging every, you every, in to do some work for him well yeah i absolutely love working for cisco so it's great so let me ask you a question how do you get out of cooking when you're a married woman like how does this work like how do you sit there and say i don't want to cook the roast honey you can do it for me well, Alisa, in, my, in my house it's usually me that broke it down so i get the perfect excuse that i've already done my work man you are talented and smart <laughs> and also, I'm the one with all the sharp knives in the house as well. <laughs> That's another one that'll saying. make him want to listen. I'm That's just saying, you. yeah. <laughs> so okay. what are you doing? You're making another roast now? Yeah, totally. So you can just see how nice and lean that is. So I have to say, that movie where he eats the old 96er. I feel you, you bring, bring, it, bring it closer to the screen. Huh? Let's show the viewers on that. Look at that beautiful piece of Canadian beef right there. What would that be? Would that be a, would that be a prime or... What grade would that be? I think this was a, I feel like this was a, a This is a uh, double A. So you can just what? see how nice that double A grade is. You know nice fat coverage over the back, finished really well. Like you can even see a little bit of marbling in here, which is excellent on such a big lean piece of meat. But obviously fat is where all the flavor is and fat is obviously what's going to keep this nice and tender while you're cooking it basically. You don't want to go too aggressive on the heat on something that's this, like lean basically so the way it works is the harder a muscle... go on sorry go on, go on sorry sorry no i was gonna say the way it works is the harder a muscle works the tougher it is but the more flavor it will have okay so it requires either more cooking time uh more tenderization to basically release those connective tissues if you think about bodybuilders they work hard they get big muscles and their muscles are tense and hard a harder yeah. working muscle it's just going to be more tough, basically. Oh, Lee. Um, yeah. If we, have, if we have to put Jay in the oven, we don't have to cook it for 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> I, I can't actually hear Jay in the background, but I'm sure he was laughing at that one. He'd be like a stir fry. <laughs> Come on, get okay. on the camera over here, Jay. Get in, brother. Here he is. <laughs> I love it, you guys. Okay, so we're going to tie this one as well. Okay, send me up, bro. I'm going to go get a full look like 70 grand. He was counting. So I was like, what, what, what would you cook something like that at? You know what? I There's a cooking method I really like uh, that was from a chef in the UK where you cook this in the oven. And you actually set the oven to the temperature that you want your beef to be in the very end. So if I'm going medium on this, you're going to like 145. So you're setting the temperature to 145 degrees Fahrenheit and you put a thermometer in this and you leave it to cook for like four or five hours and it slowly comes up to temperature and it is the nicest beef that you're going to ever eat because it's perfectly pink all the way through the middle. You've not dried it out at all. And it, you would think it just wouldn't work because the temperature on the oven is so low, but it works absolutely perfectly. So 145 and how many minutes per pound? So no, I would never advocate the so many minutes per pound method because, oh, really? yeah, because you know what? As you said before, meat is expensive. We pay a lot of money for the meat that we cook. And to just kind of guesstimate how many minutes it's gonna take, I think is a terrible thing because you are risking 
ruining this meat. You're risking doing it wrong. So I would get a temperature thermometer. I would put a thermometer into the center of here. It goes into the oven and I would keep an eye on its temperature. Get a good um, wireless thermometer, like this one here. Just goes into the meat and then it tells you on your phone exactly, exactly the temperature that's inside of this meat. But cook it slow. Don't go too aggressive. Anything that's this lean, you go too aggressive with the heat, you're just going to dry it out. So do you have like a website or a contact? Like ask, uh, ask, ask a least temperature Elise. and time. Like, you well, if you're lucky enough to be a Cisco customer, I am a protein specialist for Cisco. So you could ask me directly if you're actually buying from me. But yeah, I do. You can find me on Instagram and you can ask me any meaty questions you want to ask me. Interesting. You know what? I'm from Hero Certified Burgers. We should have you. We should have to talk to our to our customers and our franchisees about beef. And I can tell you all the fantastic attributes we buy Alberta beef. Uh, you know what? It was one of it was actually one of the things I was like. I actually knew about Alberta beef before I actually moved to Canada. So they offered my job, my husband, a job here many, many years ago, and we I'd never even been to Canada before now, and we came to look around to decide if we were going to come here. But I already knew about how good Alberta beef was because we knew about it in England. It was one of those, like, the way it's finished here and the way it's produced is so good. It really is world famous. We are incredibly lucky to have access to Alberta beef. You know, all of our butcher block beef is Canadian. Like, we really are incredibly lucky to have such good beef here. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, hundred percent. We got to really congratulate uh, all our, you know, Canadian ranchers for the work that they do and the effort they do, and, yeah. and, and, and their approach to feeding the animal and animal welfare. I think that we do a great job with that, and uh, yeah. they definitely should, uh, you know, commend it for that. Yeah. So there you go. We got two beautiful roasts here, tired and ready to go. So go into the oven, roast them off nice and slowly. As I said, set the oven to the temperature that you want the beef to be in the end. Get a thermometer into there. Leave it to chill out. Make sure you rest it when you're finished. Obviously, resting meat is incredibly important after you have finished cooking it. Um, I explained it like it's like going outside with the wrong clothing on in Alberta. You, your body tenses up because you're either too hot or too cold. So you need to let the meat relax after it's come out of the oven and away from the heat. So that all of that gel, the juices redistribute really through the meat, so it's not all tense. So yeah, very good. So now you're gonna put that in the oven for whatever, and you're gonna have dinner in a four or five hours. Yeah, totally. So you're, yeah. you're, you're what time is it in Alberta there? It is eleven thirty. Okay, so you're gonna have dinner ready for the family. Lunch time. There you go. But this is perfect, like Sunday lunch. Sunday lunch dinner, you've got to make a special occasion of a Sunday lunch, and this is what now, you how need. Does that, how does that work the day after? So if you were to cook that and you had half left over and you had a beautiful dinner, well, you just leave it out at room temperature? Do you put it back in the fridge and slice it? Is it put good it the next the day? Fridge. Put it in the fridge, but then when you're going to eat it, just bring it out of the fridge at least an hour, well, half an hour, an hour before you actually want to eat it. So it's not fridge cold. You don't right. want it to be like fridge, right. fridge cold. But if you've cooked it low and slow, the way that method where you go low, it will still be beautifully pink in the middle. It will be delicious. So you know what? It was the way my grandparents would cook. You know, they would cook a big meal on a Sunday and then they would eat leftovers for the next few days. You know, we, right. we're, the exactly. modern way of eating is we eat meat every single day. Whereas not necessarily that, I know meat is more expensive now. And I do advocate by the best you can, don't eat it every day. You know, like it's how it should be. We should be paying what it costs to produce this amazing beef. And that's kind of where we are now. So, so let's get a little bit of shelf life. If you were to cook that on your Sunday meal, would it be good on Thursday or Friday after that? Yeah, three or four days is three good, no days. problem. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. very good. Um, Elise, thank you very much for your time. Um, a lot of interesting information here. Uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, joining the uh, Cisco Virtual Ki um, Virtual Kitchen Network, and <laughs> wishing you and your family all the best. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful time at that show. All the best. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay, I'll pass. Bye bye now. Oh, you're supposed to say subscribe and follow.
Like, <laughs> this guy leaves me out here alone doing this stuff. I did it for a joke. Now I'm doing the whole segment. So, <laughs> you know, since it's new, it since it's new to Cisco, um, if you can send me the invoice, I'll pass it on. Well, are you rock and roll viewers? Cisco Virtual Kitchen Network, live at the 2023 Restaurant Canada Show. Thank you, and we'll see you on the floor.